Thank you very much, Mr. Online, for joining us today. It is my pleasure. So, Mr. Online, what brings you to Israel this time around? We came because this is the 42nd annual mission of our leadership to Israel. We would bring the representatives of our 53 member national organizations to Jerusalem to learn about the issues, to meet with the top officials, to go to the hot spots so that our leaders can have the maximum information when they go back and derive the best policy positions, be able to advocate for Israel effectively, to help respond to the distortions in the media because they have seen it all firsthand. We face several things. One, of course, are the misrepresentations in the media, the distortions about what Israel's policies are and what is going on. Second, we uh, are facing increasing hostilities on the campus, the BDS campaigns, the rise of anti-Semitism. Uh, we also are dealing with the aftermath of the Iran deal and how we make sure that the maximum application of the sanctions and if necessary new sanctions, uh, but that Iran live up to the deal, focusing also on their human rights violations, the missiles, uh, ballistic missile program, etc. Also the developments in the region. Uh, we were recently in Greece and Cyprus to meet with the governments together with Greek American leaders uh, before this summit. And we will be visiting countries in this region also. Uh, so that's another area is for us to help build the bridges and foster understanding uh, at a time when so much is in turmoil and the Middle East volcano continues to erupt. So you're here in Israel with some of the key movers and shakers amongst the American Jewish community. Um, but what about the youth? There are, there's a lot of talk about a growing uh, gap between uh, American Jewish youth and the state of Israel. What are the leaders such as yourself doing to combat that phenomenon? Well, first we have invited some students to participate in the sessions and we are working with student groups in the United States, encouraging new initiatives and other efforts to counter the hostility that they encounter. But first you have to educate them. Young people can't answer and and will not will be intimidated if they don't know, if they don't feel that they have appropriate uh, responses. Uh, one of the things that we are doing is we're providing legal backing for students who encounter problems on a campus where an administration doesn't respond to an anti-Semitic or anti-Israel uh, violation of the campus rules, where speakers, Jewish and pro-Israel speakers, are prevented from speaking. Uh, providing assistance and, and counsel to students so that they feel that they are on solid footing when they stand up and defend their rights. The fact is that on most campuses, BDS gets defeated. The fact is that most university administrations are often not indifferent but ignorant. They don't get it and we have to make sure that they all understand what's at stake and that we will hold their feet to the fire using alumni, involving more faculty in, in these efforts. We have a big challenge amongst the youth. But the biggest challenge is their ignorance, and that includes Jewish young people, even those who go to some of our best day schools. They don't know, they can't answer. And we have to do much more starting at younger and younger ages. It's not enough to bring young people here at age 17, 18 for a two week tour uh, under birthright or other auspices and ignore them the first 17 years of their lives. And there has to be appropriate follow up. We have to help reinforce that educational process for all, all of the time, from early youth through their college careers. Well, there are positive and negative legal initiatives. We have many positive initiatives like anti-BDS legislation, like around sanctions laws, other things that we are working on, and work with the, to set rules on the campus. And one of the things that we're trying to do is get a universal definition of anti-Semitism, which the State Department adopted, which is very strong and very good. But we want the educational systems to adopt it so you have a standard against which to, uh, to measure whether the performance and some of the comments and things. But you also have faced a tremendous challenge because of YouTube and the whole internet and the ability of people to pr promulgate anti-Israel, anti-Semitic views instantly to large numbers of people. Even if you catch it, it takes a long time to remove it from the system. So, and, the, and when you have tens of thousands of sites operating, carrying this, these kind of hate messages, it's a serious challenge. There have been many overtures to people, to, to those who are in positions of influence in the system, to get them to understand what's really at stake, why this is so harmful, why you can't dismiss this as youthful excess or just, you know, marginal talk. 
it's, is it? it's the incitement. We see it here, what the product of incitement is with the stabbings and the, uh, the kind of terrorism, and we see it in the United States. Now, what about the, uh, the recent uh, decision about the Kotel, uh, to expand the Kotel Plaza uh, to accommodate more non-Orthodox denominations? How do you think that's going to impact on American Jews' perceptions of Israel? I think it's a positive uh, impact. It's a message that they heard some of the concerns uh, that were expressed. I think in, in um, uh, certainly amongst the elite in the communities where this is a big issue, I think for many people, they have never visited the Kotel, they don't know where it is, they don't necessarily know the context, but they know that this was a positive gesture from the government. It's a very complicated and complex issue and very sensitive. Uh, they know that uh, or know it better today and uh, hope that this will help uh, present Israel in a better light. Uh, moving on now to uh American politics, what do you or the, the wider Jewish community make uh, of the recent uh, results in Iowa? Well, you know, the Jewish community there is rather small, uh, but Jews are heavily invested in the campaigns. They, have, they contribute, they're involved working and supporting different candidates, both Republican and Democratic. Uh, Jews give disproportionately, in fact, to their numbers for political campaigns as they do for charities. Um, Obviously, for us, it's very important who gets elected. It's important for the domestic agenda, but uh, for us, the foreign agenda, as opposed to the general American populace, which doesn't give it that much significance, as reflected in the debates, for us, that is of primary importance. And virtually everybody has stated their strong support for Israel, moving the embassy, other things that they would all do, but they always love us more in June than they do in January once they get into office. So you have to look at what the people's records are, what do they stand for, who are the people around them, who are likely to be their key advisors to, under, to, to determine who they will support. Right now, I think it's certainly a toss-up, and anybody who makes predictions doesn't know. It's very hard in this, uh, this political year especially, and that you have nine more months of this, or eight more months right. to go, is almost impossible to conceive. So that was going to be my, my last question was going to be, uh, you know, what do you think of the possibility or the prospects of a, the first Jewish president of the United States of America? Well, by any standards Jewish, uh, many of them have children or in-law children who are Jewish and, uh, or some connection to the Jewish community. Uh, for us, it's the question of, of a person who has the competence, who has the understanding, the knowledge base, uh, do, do they really get it about Israel, not just what they say in the political path on the campaign trail, but what do they really feel? How will they deal with the issues of ISIS and terrorism which affects Israel? Will they stand up to Iran's violations of the JCPOA? Will they deal with the problem of ISIS fighters and, and terrorism generally? Will they stand by our allies and show the world uh, where they really stand by, by not just saying it, but by acting at UN and other fora? And the most important relationship that others in the region look to is how strong the U.S.-Israel relationship is. They judge, many of the Arab states say, that if Israel can't rely on what chance do we have? Because they believe the myths about Jewish power, Jewish influence. So we hope that we will see more discussion of constructive policies, of approaches, more that will reveal where they stand on vital issues. And I'm sure that the Jewish community will participate fully in the coming months. Uh, Getting younger people involved is a difficult challenge because just as general American populace, those under 25, 30, less than half vote. And unfortunately, it's becoming true of Jews too. And this is the most fundamental commitment to democracy, to democracy is registering and voting. So we have to do more to encourage them. We have to facilitate voter registration. I did the first drive decades ago and it was very successful. We have to do more of it to get young people to know why it's important to vote, what, that their voice does matter, and that, that they count. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Online.